the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. So look at this in Romans 8, 19. For the earnest expectation of the creatures waited. Oh, excuse me, let me bring it up to you so you can see it. <laughs> I got to get that right now. You see, you know, you're talking and you got to make sure you get it squared away. I don't have a technician with me. Amen. <laughs> so the earnest expectations, I don't pop my screen way over here. Let me get it over and out of the way. Stop sharing for a second, please. <laughs> All right, let's get that back again. It says right here, Romans 8, 19, for the earnest expectation of the, create, of the creature waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. You are the sons of God. That's what the Lord's Prayer is talking about, our Father, right? For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruptions into the what? The glorious liberty, the glorious liberty of the children of God. Look at that. I like that fact about the glorious liberty because many ministries don't want, want to take your liberty away. But God has given us a glorious liberty to choose and to walk in his will, not force in his will by ministries and countries and nation, but by his love, he gives us glorious liberty. That means that's a tough, that's a subject by itself, ain't it? But we know that the whole creation groanings and travailers and pain together unto now. And when you go by his will, I liked first Peter two, nine, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which has now attained, which which has not attained mercy, but have now attained mercy. You are a child of God. You are the people of God because it's this will of God. So when you look at it, and I, and I come off a second, yeah, when you look at it, you want his will to apply in your life. Because, see, because regardless of your the shade of color that he puts on you, what are you, a brown, white, black, brown, you, you name it. You are a chosen generation. You're special. You are a royal priesthood, not based on, you don't see, see, see the world would sit there and try to put you down, demonize you. What are you, black, white, or whatever, they try to demonize you. But God is looking at you, and that's really what matters, right? Isn't that what matters? With God, how God looks at you. He calls you a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show forward, who should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which time past you were not a people, but now the people of God, which had not mercy. See, the thing about it, we didn't have mercy, but have attained mercy. I, that's his will. See what I'm saying? See, like I said, once again, most of you agree with me that there's many out there that don't want the will of God to apply to certain people. Some of us just so stuck up and so selfish. We want to, we don't, we don't want, we want the blessing applied to ourselves. We don't want the blessing applied to others. But that's not, that doesn't matter because God's will is for the blessing to be shared for one another, all of us, regardless of the shade of color of your skin, because we're all human beings. There's no black race, there's no white race, there's no brown race, there's no Latino race. This, we're all, we're all the children of God if we choose 
Because you can be choose to be the child of the devil. You can choose that too. But we're all the children of God. And once again, it goes back to 1 Timothy 2, 4. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. That is his will. See, that's why I think it's important to do the Lord's Prayer. Because his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And, I, and regardless of how people want to think or feel, we're all children of God despite our color. And, you know, if somebody want to have a white history month, go ahead and have a white history month. Some people say, well, they, get, they talk about white history all the time. But regardless, I say it is, let's focus on all the history. Let's always have a history month, right? So that everybody can appreciate the talent and the blessings that God puts on everybody. So that we can be uh, excluded, even though these people in the past have tried to exclude people of different shades of color. Uh, I would sit there and say, that's their problem. You do your part. You do what God, do. we do the will of God. We treat people with respect and understanding regardless. And we forgive people. We forgive their ancestors because you, it's not for them, it's for you. Those people who did the atrocities in the past, they, you know, the Bible said there's a point in time for every man to die, then judgment. All those people that died in hate were, have been judged. Because that's what the Bible says. What we need to focus on is making sure that all of us operate in the will of God so that we'll be judged by the word of doing his will. Amen. <laughs> Because the reason I said that is the scripture here in Mark 8, 36. But what should it profit a man? And you got to ask yourself that question. What profits a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Wherefore, therefore, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels you you gotta understand that when we look at the history of man and the atrocities that man has done the, you, you need to recognize that some of those people exchange their soul for money, for power, for vain glory. When we talk about the appreciation of, uh, of, of, of African Americans or Black History Month, we're talking about appreciating the blessings. Nobody appreciate the atrocities of all oh, the hate or the murder that people have done. But what about the good that people have done? Amen. It, that, that's that's what that is about. In a lot of cases, they talk about indoctrination when they talk about the woke and all that other stuff. They, you you got to understand, people are awakened because the God of this world has blinded those who he's trying to destroy. God has shined his light on all of us to see the truth. You know, the truth of God, the blessing of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God didn't put slavery in. He didn't put lynching in, didn't put raping in. And he knows that that's not his children that did those things. And most of us need to understand, you, you just because your, your parents may have did it or your descendants may have done it, that doesn't mean that's you. And that doesn't mean you teach your children or hide that fact from your children because they know those type of things. What we want to do is we learn from our history. That was Black History Month as well. First of all, Shannon, I appreciate, because so many people, if you look at the, the history of that, of that junk, a lot of people were sitting there just, uh, really just, just hating and teaching the hate, and it's still there. 
you know, just not not a few few weeks ago, the video came up with a a, a group of, of girls, uh, Anglo-Saxon, European, white girls, whatever you want to call it, was painting another white girl blackface and calling the calling the person uh, a, a slave and 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 talk about the fact is they're gonna make them do be a servant, and you gotta understand who taught that. You know that wasn't taught to do that or to treat people that way, right? That was taught in Black History Month. It was taught to talk about the success. And the fact is, yeah, these people, a lot of people, African Americans, came to this country on a on a uh, not on a cruise ship, but on a slave ship, and and not treated as people, but treated as cargo. And then you talk about when they came into this country, they were treated as livestock, as property. And they would, and the thing about it is, I'm saying, unlike most people, they don't do, they don't, there's no widespread bestiality of, of having sex with an animal. I hope not. But they did that to uh, African American slaves. <laughs> they lynched them, they, they, they did all kinds of bad things to them. And even after the slavery, they did uh, all kinds of lynching and hurting and Jim Crow laws and all that. So those things happened. And they were wrong. And that was not the reflection of God. And that's why I think we read that. The fact is that the, he, he, he wants us to, to not give away our soul. Us now, because we can't change the people who died in the sin. We can't change what happened to people who died uh, exchanging their soul to, to the devil for the status for money, for power. We can't do it. There's nothing we can do about that. You know that, I know that. But what we can do about it today, for the people of the day, the children today, or the children of tomorrow, today, let's appreciate how to do and move forward, showing the glorious gospel of God, amen? So just remember that. I think it's so important for us not to allow ourselves to fall into these deceitful traps of the devil so that we can gain some type of vain glory that benefits us nothing, only puts us in the jeopardy of going to hell. And Matthew 4, 8, it says, this is Jesus who was tempted. And I tell you, lead us not into temptation, <laughs> but if you are led into temptation, he gave you a way to pass that test. This is the devil tempted Jesus in Matthew 4, 8. It says, again, the devil takes us up into a seat in high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto them, all the things I will give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's what you're talking about is exchanging your soul for vain glory. Because I guarantee you all the kingdoms that he showed them, or at least put it, the kingdoms that were at that time, don't exist anymore. And the kingdom, if you show all the kingdoms throughout history, you'll see the rise and falls of kingdoms over and over again. And why would someone want to worship something that can only give you a temporary thing opposed to God who will give you eternal? That's something to think about. Amen. And Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. God and him only shall I serve. Then the devil leaves him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. So, my my point of that, when you look at it, when we talk about racism, uh, when we talk about white supremacy, black supremacies, any other type of supremacies, for 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 status, it, what profit do a person? What what profits a person to gain? Give their soul away. What profit is to give your children's soul away? What profit is to give your own soul away for a vain glory, temporary glory? How many times, look, kingdoms, uh, nations, and all this stuff have fallen. They can't sustain themselves. Right now, we as a country, we as a world, mankind, has in its power right now to launch nuclear weapons and, and to destroy the entire world for vain glory. You, you know that. For vain glory. And you, you're talking about the fact is that we got people that's, that's killing people. This got doctors sitting there causing young black women to, to, to uh, 
die in childbirth. Cause what? Because of, of vainglory? What are you going to say when they go before God? Father, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not killed these, let these, these black people die in your name? And Christ is going to look at him and say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you work of iniquity. Because I didn't call you to kill. I called you to preach the gospel, the good news. But you want to sit there and do something because of vain glory? You want to do something because of the color of people's skin? And you think I'm going to sit there and honor that? Who in this world, who in, this, who in your right mind actually believe that they, they hate the, the systemic racism? The, the, and I'm talking about from, I don't care whether you're black or white. Who do you think, who, what God do you think you're going to go before that's going to reward you? Who, who? Who think that it was okay for you to rape somebody? Who do you think it was okay? That young man that just recently went into New York uh, a year ago and, and killed 10 or 13 people in that market store because of the mere color of their skin. Who do you think, who, who, what God do you think is going to accept that? What God you serve? Did you believe that that's right? What God you serve believe that you're supposed to cause redlining districts and said that well these people will only get nothing we're not going to give them any grants we're not going to give them any loans we want to sit down and oppress them as much as we can we want to discriminate against them as much as we can what god are you think you serving what god do you believe is going to give you reward what 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 god do you think is going to do that where did you get that from you didn't get it from god you didn't get it from our Bible. I know you didn't get it from the Bible. You did not get it from the Bible to discriminate. You did not get it from the Bible to sit there and kill. Yeah, I'm glad that I talked about it in the Christian Bible said to go preach the good news. Good news is not to go into a grocery store and kill them. Good news is not to discriminate against people. Good news is not to enslave people. Good news is that Christ said, this John 10, 10, a thief come to steal, kill, and destroy, but I, Christ, came to give life and life abundantly, more abundantly. And just like Lord's Prayer, His will be done in earth as heaven. What heaven you think you want to go to that's going to say, well, was, Lord, it was okay for me to do that to somebody? You, you think about it. So that's why we got to sit there and listen and apply the word of God in our life daily instead of sitting there allowing ourselves to fall in these traps that people sins it calls us to fall into it's just it's just you you need to know the word of god for yourself and you need to apply it in your life god loves you but if you want to be the child of the devil he's going to let you be that and you want to be the child of the devil for status you want to be a child of the devil for color god who what's wrong and I know it's, you know it's wrong. Because the fact is, Genesis, I put up here, Genesis 1, 26. He's saying, God said, let us make man in our image. We're all made in the image of God. He did not say uh, a black man or a white man or a brown man or red man or whatever man you want to call. He said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. That means every human being let me come out this for a second. Let me, let me get that right here. That, that means every human being are made in the image and the likeness of God. And I told you before, the shades and colors is just like he done the shades and colors of the nature of nature, of the trees, the plants. He done did the shades and colors of the animals. He's done, he done shades and colors of the fish. Or the creatures of the sea, he don't gave all different shades of color because that's his masterpiece. And we made in the image and the likeness of God are his masterpiece because he gave us, he didn't make us all look the same. He, we all, scientifically speaking, we're all 99.9% .9 the same. Look it up for yourself. I don't care if you want to deny it. But I'm telling you, if you want to know the truth, if you want to know the facts, we're 99.9% .9 the same. There is no human being that is 100% the same. He 
even a twin has some torques and differences in them. We're all made in the likeness of image of God. So we should all treat each other with love and respect of the image and the creation, the beauty, the masterpiece that God has given us. Because that's what God called us to be. I know man told you to be something different, but you put your trust in God and not in man. He looks right back at Genesis 126. Let's go back up there again. And if I want to, I'm going to read it again so you can see. In Genesis 1, chapter 1, first book, I think everybody read the first few book chapters of the Bible of Genesis, right? But if, if you do, this is chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion of the fish of the sea you know the fowls of the air and over the cattle and all the earth and every creepy thing that creeps upon the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him and got male and female created he them huh we're all made in the image of god now you go find go 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 get somebody to read it and tell you well aren't we all made in the image of god that was scripture say and let me tell you son don't put your trust in man, put your trust in God. Look at this in Jeremiah 7, 5. Thus says the Lord, curse, curse is the man that trusts in man and make his flesh his arm, meaning his flesh his strength, and who heart departed from the Lord. I said in the last video, the one that didn't go through, and I better go take this sound, make sure this sound works too, so I don't want his son to be get here. I hope not. I hope the thing don't mess up because I'll do it again if it does. <laughs> but the point is, <laughs> I'll do it again if it mess up, I'll tell you. Thus, <laughs> thus says the Lord, curse be the man that trusts in man and make us his flesh, his arm, and the host heart departed from the Lord. Verse 7 said, but blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and who heart and hope is the Lord is. He, that's who he put his trust in. Not in man, but in God. Who, verse again in 1 Timothy 2, 4, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Well, I think we need to make sure we, we want to get to that point that we come to the knowledge of the truth of God. Amen. That's the blessing. I, 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 I like that. And I, and I want you to always remember that, is to share that the, we are all made in the image of God. And, and we trust in him and not in man. Because you know man is testing you down the wrong path. And you know man is turning on each other. You know man don't care about the color of each. You know, really, the devil don't care about the color. God don't care about your color. We make ourselves care about the color so that we can sit there and try to find ways to divide one another and to profit. You know, uh, I was looking at that one thing Linda B. Johnson said, and said, if you can convince the poorest white man that he's better than the richest black man, then you can, he'll give you, he'll pay his taxes, he'll pay more taxes, he won't care about any benefits, anything else, because you convince him of a status that has no value. You're not putting more food on his table. You're not educating him. You're not making him better. You're just keeping him poor and broke and just has, but I feel good because I'm not, I'm not the lowest. And then you gotta understand, no man can determine, define what God has already called you to be. You, you are already in the same level with the richest person because you are a child of God. You have already been called a royal priesthood, a holy nation, peculiar people because of God. You already been called the apple of his eyes. You have already, see, if you sit there and try to get, if you're looking for your status to be based on man, if you're looking for your recognition to be based on man, you already said, said that a man is above God. Because you're not appreciating what God called you to be. You're appreciating what somebody in the world calls you to be. And I'm telling you, focus on who God calls you to be. 
and then start a profit, meaning he wants you to have abundant life. He don't want you to be poor. He ain't asking you to be rich, but he don't want you to be poor. He don't want you to be oppressed and de depressed or anything else or disgusted, broke and disgusted. He wants you to have the best in this life. Remember the Lord's Prayer, in earth as it is in heaven. We been, some of us have been duped so bad. You've just been duped. You're sitting there thinking that you, you, a status is supposed to make you feel better and you're willing to pay everything you can for a status that has no value. My friends, we call it a water fountain. They gave up, you know, the water fountain used to be the a water fountain for whites only, the water fountain for blacks only. There was a water, there was a bathroom for blacks to go to, and there was a bathroom for whites to go to. And so, so a white person sit there and said, "Man, I got a, I got a bathroom. So I got, I got a status. I may be poor as the poor, I could be homeless and everything else, but I can go to that white water fountain. But can you go to God? That's what you need to always worry about." Can I go to God? I know people. I know the evil people. I know the people that's dark, calling darkness, but can I go to God? Can I glorify God or do I have to glorify those people that have more money than me, but have the same color as me? And because they said I'm better, I'm better. I feel better because they told me. Opposed to the fact is that what God told you, and God says, I you the apple of my eye. And I just said, in the, we are the masterpiece of God. We are marvelous and wondrously made. I'd rather hear what God has to say. Amen. And stop trying to worry about trying to put somebody else down so you can feel better. You know, that that's, that's dog ain't hunting. And that's not what God called you to be. God called you to love one another. You know, if you want to be a Christian, but if you don't want to be a Christian, then you go ahead and do, I guess you're going to still, you can think the way you want to. And you got to remember those people that don't care and don't believe in God, they don't care. They don't care. And you sit there and try to get their appreciation, they ain't going to get you in heaven. They ain't going to get you in heaven. Look at this right it says here. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.